that will go ahead and translate the question, but the answer will, uh, will be translated via Zoom. Let's go ahead and start in the front row here. And then we'll go to Michelle next. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo le va? Milan Soleimani para AB News aquí de Miami. La pregunta, coach, es ¿qué le faltó al equipo para poder eh, llegar a ganar al Inter de Miami? ¿Cómo lo vio usted? ¿En qué cree que hay que modificar para seguir adelante próximamente, no? Sí. I think that uh, the boys, our boys, uh, play well and uh, Certainly, they didn't. Uh, I think that the result overshadowed the performance. In my opinion, the result is way too is way too severe for the way for what I see on the pitch. Um, what we should have had, and this is something we need to work on to be sharper in the last third, because I think it took a long time for us in the first half to step into the game, and to and this is something that it happened already couple of times in the last few games where we are growing as a team, but uh, it took a little bit of time for us to, when we had the ball, we lost it straight away. We were just, we wanted to play long all the time. And when you play against a team that is so good at uh, keeping it, it's important that uh, when they have it and that we have it as well, because I think that we also can play with the ball and uh, build it from the back and creating chances, advances through the thirds. Uh, the difference for me is in the sharpness in the last third. If we score the 2-1 with Patrick when the cross of Kevin Vargas, I think the game is different. We might still lose, but uh, the game for me changed a little bit of momentum because after that, Recording in progress. simple, stupid mistakes that we have from a throw-in, we can see the third one. And then after we knew that the next goal after the tunnel would have been the decisive one. Unfortunately, they scored it. And, uh, and it was then after very, very difficult for us to come back in terms of, term of the results. But I'm proud how we played and we created chances. And uh, this is what we need to improve, in my opinion. Let's go to Michelle in the front row, please. Um, hello, Michelle Coffin for the Miami Herald. Uh, can you just talk about Leo Messi's addition to this team and the other Jordi Alba and Best Busquets? Just how different is this Miami team from the team that MLS teams were facing before July? Yeah, sure. Uh, and <laughs> it's our luck to play them three times, right? But uh, no, I mean, you bring three players that they were the starting players of uh, a team that has been defined by many experts, maybe the greatest ever. So <laughs> what, what do you do? You play with guys that they have a great... Uh, understanding on the pitch that they occupy different positions they can help uh, the team to magnify the, the the qualities that they have and plus when you have uh, Messi you know that you just need a chance you just need one second in the game and you have to be always very very sharp to stop him from producing Uh, the magic that he has always produced since he came to to the scene in Barcelona when he was 16. We're going to take two more in the room, then go to Zoom. We'll go to Claudio, and then the gentleman over there was first. Christian, ciao. Ciao. Eh, eh, teniendo en cuenta lo que hizo Patrick en el partido con eh, Houston, eh, ¿por qué no, no lo pusiste de entrada? ¿Por qué no empezó el partido hoy? Because I thought that, uh, because I thought that we found the balance also defensively. Um, and I thought that given the quality that uh, Miami has, uh, we wanted to minimize the impact that uh, the partnership was gets messy because we saw that the the link that they have, it's at the heart of the, of the play. And I thought that it, we did quite well in the first half with that. Unfortunately, we gave away a sloppy penalty and the second goal, in my opinion, also could be avoided. And um, I thought that the contribution of Messi in the first half and of Busquets wasn't wasn't great. So I thought that we were working well. Unfortunately, we were tunnel down. And my plan was to put Patrick in the second half and to change things. Unfortunately, when you are tunnel down, it looks like a desperation moment. But instead, we we work on that. We uh, we plan that as well to try to put them together and. Uh, But uh, and I think that that, that partnership worked well. Uh, to start with that, I don't know if we would have been 
if we would have been then uh, uh, equally, and this for me to say this is silly because of the results, right? But uh, I thought that uh, we minimize the way that uh, I don't think Miami created many chances, and the two were two chances that. Uh, uh, that lead to goals, but they shouldn't, in my opinion. All right, let's go to the gentleman there in the back row. Saludos, coach. La atención por acá, Juan Carlos Guerrero. Eh, este Inter de Miami en este momento tiene dos, dos semifinales: US sure. Open Cup y Leagues Cup. Hace 35 días esto era impensable. Eh, ¿Cree usted que Inter Miami puede ir por esos dos títulos? Puede ser el gran favorito. Eh, a ganarlo y, y de cara a lo que viene para la MLS porque va a ser un equipo totalmente diferente que sí. quizás no clasifique entre los primeros lugares a los playoffs pero si clasifica entre los últimos va a ser un problema bastante grande claro yeah but also because they they have uh, add, uh, they added also two young players like uh, Fagundo Farías and uh, Aviles from Racing they are two very very good players I I followed them in the past. So I think that this Miami team is completely transformed. And when you are in the semifinal, I don't think that there is a big favorite, but when you have Messi, Busquets and Alba in the team, surely you can't hide from wanting to win every competition in which you, in which you take part. So for me, they are... Uh, I don't know if they are the clear favorites, but for sure, when you're in the semifinal, they can go all the way in all the competition. And like you said, I agree with you. If they find a way of getting to the playoff, I think they also have a chance in there. I've seen it in the past in this league. I remember one year with Seattle that they arrived very late at the playoff and then they had a very good team at the time and they went all the way. So if it was possible, it's still possible for every team to win it. And this is the, the beauty and the magic of the playoff, I guess. We're going to take two questions via Zoom. Let's go to Carol, please. Hey, Christian, just wondering what you guys take from this Leagues Cup, Leagues Cup experience. I know tonight's disappointing, but what do you take from this going forward? We take a lot. We take a lot, Carol. We take, uh, first of all, the way we perform. We perform away most of the games. And to be fair, I never use that an excuse. I'm not going to use it here. I want to compliment our boys because we play the way a lot. And to travel every time three hours and then having, you know, to Texas. It was, it was hard on the boys that they were living on adrenaline, living on uh, enthusiasm, good recovery. But in the end, you know, the, the, you start to become tired mentally and physically. So I thought that one thing that we can take, that we can go away and play well. I thought that we play well here as well against a team that... Uh, is uh, is completely transformed lives they also live on enthusiasm and uh, magic because of uh, the new acquisition and everybody is buzzing because of them so what i can take from our boys is to the, the way they perform and uh, i am very sorry about the result mainly for for the boys because i don't think this is a four nail and we can be proud of all the our head up the way we play the old tournament and to go out with this result, is, it leaves us a little bit, uh, you know, bitter in the mouth. But uh, you, you feel like we've been punched in the face, but we go, we take it, we move forward. We are going to be like Rocky, you know, we go down, but we get up again. All right, last question, Sam Spencer, please. Hi, Coach. Uh, sorry about the result tonight. Um, so Carol asked my question in half. Um, but the second part for me was of the lessons of the takeaways from League's Cup, um, what do you take to your next MLS match in 15 days against uh, LAFC? And yeah. what do you take with the two more matches that Charlotte FC is going to play against Miami this year? Listen, we start a new, we start a new phase of the league. Uh, we show mainly to ourselves how good we can be and we can go ev everywhere and play our game. The big lesson today, as I said at the beginning of this press conference, and I say, I will repeat what I said to the boys in the change room, that I'm very proud of the way they played, but we need to improve our sharpness in the last third. And that comes from training to work even harder because we thought that we give, uh, 
our best when we train, but there is, uh, we need to find the resources to give more because we are playing against teams that uh, they um, strengthen themselves. We also strengthen ourselves with Brecht, uh, the Jager, and with uh, Jere Uronen that unfortunately we couldn't have at disposal. But we will when we play LAFC, at least I hope so, with Jere. And then, uh, listen, we have to keep playing the way we play uh, and uh, to be sharp in in every moment, especially in the last third when we have the chance to create problems. Because also today, we had few chances in the first and the second half. And the way that we came out and fighting against the team that uh, is flying at the moment and to give them a battle in the second half, I think uh, you have to be a strong team to do that. Thank you very much, coach. Thank you. All right, folks, stand by. We should have Tata Martino any second.